SOP 13. No, 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 that's right. Andrew Bailey. Thank you, um, Mr. Speaker. I'd hate to be known as a stray. Um, I'd like to, uh, first of all, acknowledge and um, support this motion uh, put up by the Honourable Amy Adams, because, in my view, this was a relatively straightforward bill that the Finance and Expenditure Select Committee took a great deal of time to work through, and it's a very complicated bill uh, and traverses a number of issues. And that in itself was fine, and uh, there was a lot of agreement within the committee. However, this uh, SOP 13 that was slapped on the table, in my view, Mr Speaker, is an absolute callous and quite deliberate move. And at the time that it was introduced by the um, Minister, uh, I too stood and uh, put a motion that uh, this uh, SOP should be debated by the Select Committee. Because, Mr Speaker, this deliberate attempt to wait until the Select Committee had completed its final deliberations after some months of uh, working through the elements of this bill, and then to complete its report, and within a matter of hours, for this SOP, which, Mr Speaker, goes to seven pages, it's not an insignificant uh, SOP, this. It covers, I think, about 15 sections, and it covers seven pages. It's a very unusual and substantial, substantial SOP. And for me, as uh, one of the members of the uh, Finance and Expenditure Committee, I find, find this whole motion to introduce such a substantial change uh, without allowing the committee to consider that uh, as a travesty. But more than that, um, it raises the question of why uh, a government would even do this when it says it's been flagging policies but does not allow people to um, make an input and, and be consulted on it. And I think, I think um, that's what vexes me the most, Mr Speaker. And I think uh, if you look at this bill, and it actually states in the bill, uh, uh, sorry, in the SOP on page six, the objective in, in extending the current bright line test from two to five years is about ensuring speculators pay tax on the gains. Now, Mr Speaker, the thing that um, I think, in a contextual way, as soon as you go about making this change without allowing people to be informed of it and allowing people to be consulted on it and allowing uh, input on it, uh, we run the risk of seriously deviating from good uh, legislation. And I'll, I'll just highlight some of the likely parties who will sh want to show interest in this. The first thing about this SOP, it is likely to have an impact not only on existing housing and ownership thereof, but it also is likely to have um, substantial implications for new houses. Secondly, uh, it will have impact implications for social houses and, fourthly, emergency houses. Now, in the context of what we were talking about today, we heard a government who was saying that they're not about to undertake any new housing until after 1st of July, until they've got their money. But if you take this bill on face value, I, I, would no, I now know, without even thinking about it too much, that the likely parties who will want to be, uh, want to be heard on this bill uh, will include government agencies, particularly those relating to social and housing outcomes, councils, uh, property investors, renters, and I think the renters will have a lot of concern about this bill, lawyers, conveyances, bankers and financiers, particularly those who already uh, finance uh, houses that um, people have acquired, uh, developers. And I just think, you know, there's a list of, what, 10, 10 parties who would almost be guaranteed who are going to front up to this uh, select committee if it has the opportunity in a transparent way and make very substantial um, submissions on this on this SOP. And I just, I just find the issue of why this government would choose to callously and, and 
to not allow that to take place. Because this is not a simple issue, Mr Speaker. We're not talking about one little SOP. This is a substantial, complicated piece of tax and has implications not only for tax, which is the purpose of the original bill, but also in terms of social and economic and housing policy. And I think that just dictates, in fact, justifies, or even stronger than that, uh, that dictates that we must hear from those people, that the committee should have the opportunity to do that in a robust and open way, and that the press should be allowed to report on that when, it, uh, when, when that process is completed. Because, Mr Speaker, this is an issue that will cut to the core of many, many New Zealanders uh, who own property or potentially want to own property or are in the process of owning property, who may be actually now, uh, if this bill, if this SOP is adopted, may find themselves in uh, significant financial difficulty. And so, Mr Speaker, on those grounds alone, I think it's absolutely imperative that the committee has the opportunity to do that. And I think if this was truly a representative, and I, th I believe I remember the words of um, uh, Honourable Claire Curran, who said she wanted to make this party, her party, the Labour Party, the most open and transparent government in New Zealand's history. I may be slightly out with my quote, but lo words along those lines. How does that reconcile with that statement, Mr Speaker? It does not reconcile at all, Mr Speaker. This is an issue that should be before the select committee and the public and should be debated openly because it is quite significant and it demands an approach where everyone can have their say. Um, I call... Um, um, yeah, uh, you can... Um, call again. Sorry, I call Lawrence Shaw. Lawrence Shaw. OK. I am mute. Point of order, Honourable Ian Lee um, in, in my experience, where members have sought to take a closure motion and that closure motion has not been accepted, mm -hmm. they have been able to take further calls in the debate. Mm -hmm. Well, well I, I have seen that occur on several occasions, Mr Speaker. Yeah, I'll, I'll make the ruling that I'll, I'll decide who's speaking next, and I've called Lawrence Shiel. Uh, Mr Speaker, it gives me... Point of order, the Honourable Ian Lees Galloway. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. I draw your attention to uh, Speaker's Ruling 77 4.